All right, so what happens um, when petrol supply declines? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the obvious answer is that by definition people use less fuel. That's what happens. What's the problem? Why do you understand why I put that up there? The whole breakdown of society. Right. Why would using a bit less fuel cause the breakdown of society? <laughs> we have an answer. <laughs> we have a civilization that's based on the concept of growth. Mm. Because one of our fundamental assumptions no longer holds true. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe we'll talk about growth later. But um, really, the thing to think about is that that how in the world could using less fuel than right now be a problem? Um, no rational person would say that we don't have enough oil right now. You know, how, how can that be rational, that, that, there's, that we don't have enough, we need more? And in fact, you know what? Last year, we used less oil. And the year before that, we used less oil. So we already know how to do it. <laughs> All right, so if using less fuel isn't a problem, you know, it, how do we know that, that it's not a problem? Well, what if in 2009 we used 260 petajoules? You know what that is? Well, that's um, how much fuel we used in 2007. So that is a, that's a, a sort of a hold pattern going down just a little bit. Um, 2010, what if we reduced by 10%? It sounds shocking, doesn't it? But that's what we did in 2004. A 10% reduction. Doesn't that sound scary? 10%. Or does it? What's 10%? That's 1 in 10. <laughs> that's really not that much. That's what we were doing in 2004. How about a 20% reduction? Well, you do have to go all the way back to 1995 to get a 20% reduction. But what's deceptive about this is that's a total... 208 petajoules. 1990, New Zealanders per person used half the fuel we're using now. Per person. In other words, our fuel consumption has zoomed right past our, our population growth. We are not using more fuel every year because there's more people. We're doing something else. What I'll tell you is nine years ago when I moved here, we breathed such a sigh of relief. There's no SUVs. <laughs> That's one of the things you've been doing. The other thing is your freight movements have been exploding. We're just, there's so many more trucks moving so much more stuff. And I'm not sure anybody really knows why, but um, maybe it's all those new warehouse. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think we could do that actually. I'm not that worried about it. Um, that I'm worried about. And this is something we've already done, right? You've, how many of you have seen this plot before? I think this is brilliant, actually. This is from ice cores that were taken in um, Russia. And what you've got here is this is now, year zero. And as you go this way, um, you're going back in time. So over the last few years, they've figured out how to drill an ice core down into a very, very stable piece of ice in a very old glacier up in the north part of Russia. They're doing it in Antarctica, too. But this is one of the really old ones. And as they pull it up, they seal it and trap the gases that are in it. And then with very sensitive instruments, they analyze the gas that was trapped as that snow fell. And they can actually get a historical record of the gas, um, the, the atmospheric concentration of different gases. And a lot of gases concentrations have changed with time. And they can see when a, um, when a volcano blows up because it leaves a signature in the atmosphere and, and leaves particulates and things like that. And so this is a map of the CO2 levels back in time 400,000 years. Well, according to my National Geographic, um, around this point, back to about 400,000 years ago, um, the, An the Neanderthals were marching around. And so they actually had a very long run. And then from here on, you start to see uh, Homo sapiens, sapiens uh, are sort of people, and they start to overlap with the, um, the Neanderthals in this range, and especially in Europe, once they've overlapped for um, 20 or 30,000 years, then the Neanderthals die out. And so if you look at 30,000 years ago, that's about here, during um, the last deep ice age, which all, you know, the, the woolly mammoths and all that good stuff, 
Um, that's where those beautiful cave paintings in France were painted. So people like us with artistic talents and big ideas were around and they were, um, they were making it through that, that really rough time of, um, of global climate change. And then um, the reason that this is going up and down, for those of you who, who don't know about that, is that the Earth doesn't have a perfect circular orbit. It has a bit of an elliptical orbit with a wobble. And sometimes we are closer to the sun and sometimes we're farther away. And that's just a periodic fluctuation. All right, so um, when we're closer to the, uh, to the sun, we get more sun, there's more plant growth, there's more CO2 in the carbon cycle because more of the planet is not covered by ice. And when we're farther away, the planet's almost all covered by ice and there's a very small carbon cycle going on. And so this CO2 level shows you that. All right, so then we came out of the ice age, getting a bit closer to the, um, to the sun. And about here, right about that point there, is where humans figured out how to do agriculture, right? And they figure that the methane emissions from humans started to help with the global warming a bit. And then the um, uh, cutting down of trees and forests. And uh, when I went to Te Papa, they said that uh, over the last thousand years, New Zealand has lost about 90% of its forests, gone up in smoke. So there's some more of that. And then, Oh, there's the lovely front paintings in France. And then we find coal. All right, so this is the industrial age, and now the CO2 emissions are up to here. All right, 385 rising by about two parts per million per year. Okay, parts per million, what is that? That's um, um, a very small percentage of the air. So you have a million parts of other gases and 385 parts of carbon dioxide. Now. When our ancestors were figuring out how to survive the glaciers, it was down here below 200. All right. Um, if we follow the Kyoto Protocol and work really hard um, to reduce our CO2 emissions, then we're looking at a uh, 550 part per million optimistic target by 2030.